I've learned um, from studying the Word of God and from just this, this journey that God has brought me on is that my weeping may last for a night, but my joy is going to come in the morning. And so while some people do experience complete freedom from anxiety and depression, um, coping has been what God has given me because if I didn't learn how to cope, I would have taken my life five, six, seven, I try it at least five, six, seven times by now. So I know that it can seem unhealthy to encourage women to learn to cope, but I know that God has graced me enough to learn to cope. I was diagnosed with anxiety and OCD, ADHD, and Tourette syndrome uh, when I was 11 years old, and I'm uh, almost 28 this year. Um, and I, I've, I've always struggled with trying to find that balance of when am I being anxious? When am I stressed? When am I being irrational? Uh, when is this a, a character flaw? And then when is this my chemical imbalance? When is this my, my brain, you know, the stuff that showed up in the MRI, you know, like, when is that? But a few months ago, I was on the phone with my mom and about 25 minutes into the conversation, she could tell that I was talking really fast and she could, I don't know how she can guess my heart rate over the phone, but whatever, <laughs> moms. And it was like, she could just sense it. And she just stopped in the middle of, she stopped me in the middle of my tracks. And she said, when's the last time you saw your counselor? Mm -hmm. And it was so frustrating to have that accountability, yeah. like, but it was so needed to have yes. that accountability yeah. because there, there are different, there are different warning signs as to yeah. when say I'm stressing over what to wear for an event versus <laughs> when I'm having so much anxiety about that event that I, mm -hmm. I can't make myself move, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I've had to recognize those warning signs, but I've also had to recognize that it's so imperative for me to be intentional with who's in my circle and who's yeah. in my corner so yes. that they can call me out when they recognize the things that yeah. are different in my behavior. My mom has been like my biggest support system I mean, when, when I was diagnosed with everything at 11 years old. She's actually the person that printed out all the paperwork and took it to the doctor and was like, oh, this is what my kids got. And they were like, oh, okay, our two years of research, you, you know, knock it out in like two weeks. Um, so my mom is, I mean, my dad's great and my sister's great, but my mom has been like my homeschool mom and she's been with me every step of the way. And in my adulthood, it's been really great, but I will say that it's, it's, it's still a choice. It's not a, oh, my mom's gonna help me, I'll be fine. Um, it definitely takes a lot of humility. It takes times where um, there was actually a, a time about halfway through my pregnancy where I, I had a breakdown. And I think a lot of it was what you would call classic pregnancy, but a lot of it was my anxiety. And my husband uh, called my mom and he said, she needs you. And for a lot of people that might be, that might seem so embarrassing and it was a little embarrassing, but I needed her and I knew I needed her. And she's able to look at me and say, you know, you're talking really fast. You seem really anxious. When's the last time you saw your counselor? Um, or when I was on medication, I'm not anymore, but there was a time where she would say, I, it seems like you may have missed it today. Like, did, did you take your medication? And it's just, it's, it's that accountability. It's, it's not just saying, oh, she's gonna hold me accountable, but it's humbling yourself to allow someone that close into the dark with you so that when they recognize that you're stepping out of the light, they can uh, bring you back. I heard um, a preacher a long time ago say, halt. Um, yes. The warning signs are when you're hungry, angry, angry yeah. lonely, and tired. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who has struggled with my weight my entire life, I can mm -hmm. say um, I'm very rarely hungry. But for me, I recognize when I'm eating so much, and for me it's sugar, um, that I'm making myself sick, that's a warning sign for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm really quick to be angry about something, that's a big warning sign for me. Yeah. Uh, as a single woman, I live in the loneliness, but I think there is a difference between isolating and just needing some time by right. myself. Absolutely. And then there is the tired thing for me, it's when I'm sleeping a lot. That's when I know that I've crossed over into yeah. that danger mm -hmm. zone. It's and so that's, I know, I recognize when the danger zone is. For me, it is, okay, what am I going to do to get out of it? And you said something a little bit ago about speaking to God out loud. There's something about hearing him audibly mm -hmm. um, and also quieting myself to give him permission to speak yes. to me. I don't, I don't give him space yeah. to speak enough. Good. And so I think that's one of the practical things that I need to do yeah. to get myself out of that pit is to talk out loud. Um, it just makes it a little yeah. bit more tangible. Well, and because when you yeah. do that, you're, 
you're speaking out loud, so you actually feel like you're having a conversation with somebody real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think right. sometimes when we have it in our mind, it keeps it kind of make believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when you speak out loud, you're yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm having a conversation with somebody real, even if you don't hear a voice <laughs> speaking back at right. you. Um, but also, then you're also, I speak the word of God yeah. out loud mm-hmm. because yeah. it seems sometimes I feel like that sounds so elementary, but I mean, I am a paper and pencil person, yeah. so I write the word of God yeah. out. And then I read it because I'm a visual learner. So I have to like see my own handwriting and then I read it out loud. And I think you even said it's because when you read it, you're like not only speaking and declaring it, but then you're also hearing Hearing, it. And it's, it's this like constant, you know, cycle that's so, it's an empowering cycle of speaking and hearing. Whenever you feel any of those things, just know you need to be on guard because that is often where the enemy likes to come and rush in. For me, when I recognize that I'm starting to go to that place, I have a choice to make. I can either choose to wallow and stay in that place, and I've done that more times than I care to admit, or I can do something, whether that is putting on worship music or getting on my elliptical trainer or just getting out um, into the sunlight or just having coffee with a friend. That interrupts the enemy's power over my life and it stops, it lets you halt, it lets you not go and to wallow into that place of darkness, but it kind of interrupts the flow of you walking into that dark place. All of my hope has come from the freedom that I will ultimately have in heaven. When oftentimes when, it, when I talk about my story and having been diagnosed with anxiety and all these things, people talk about healing and how it's going to give me exact freedom because God gives us everything we pray for. God doesn't always answer, in my story I've learned that God doesn't always answer every prayer exactly how I ask. That heaven is where I'll experience the ultimate freedom of all of what God could do. Because if I experienced it all here on this earth, then I would have nothing to look forward to in heaven. And so part of my journey has been learning to understand that there are going to be things in my life that God is not going to fix in the way that I would interpret. He's going to fix them, but it's not in the way that I would interpret. What I've learned um, from studying the Word of God and from just this, this journey that God has brought me on is that My weeping may last for a night, but my joy is going to come in the morning. And so while some people do experience complete freedom from anxiety and depression, um, coping has been what God has given me. Because if I didn't learn how to cope, I would have taken my life five, six, seven, uh, tried at least five, six, seven times by now. So I know that it can seem unhealthy to encourage women to learn to cope, but I know that God has graced me enough to learn to cope. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community. 